All right. So, uh, you hear me okay? Great. So, just out of my own interest, um, who already uses Foreman? Okay, good. That's more than nice. And, uh, okay, who just uses Puppet? Anyone not using either? Yeah, it's going to be a slow talk if you do. Um, so, so this talk's really in three parts. Um, I'm going to do just a little bit on Foreman for those who don't already know it, uh, just mainly for the video, I guess, but and also the full time. Um, I'm also going to talk about Octo Catalog Diff itself. Um, so that's what's the is that the pointer? Yeah. So this bit here. Um, so even if you don't use Foreman, there's something in here for you. Maybe some of the concepts and the command line tool is useful to you. And then at the end, I'll talk about the plugin that I've written uh, to bring that together. So very, very quickly on the Foreman then, because you guys already know it. But again, just, just for the video, if you don't know Foreman, it's a configuration management and lifecycle management tool. It allows you to take the whole set of operations that you need to act upon for a server. Uh, you need to do provisioning, you need to get the disk up and running, whether that's Pixie and unattended network installs, whether that's booting an AMI or a digital ocean droplet or a disk template for VMware or you know, whatever. You need to get something up and running, you need to do some one-time configuration, get that hooked into Puppet or Ansible or Salt or Chef. And then once you've got it hooked into your infrastructure, you want to manage it over time, so that means driving the configuration management using the ENC or you know, defining uh, Ansible roles to play. Uh, you want to get reports back, you want to get inventory data back, you want to talk about whether your infrastructure is per performing properly, behaving properly, whether hosts are out of sync or have errors. That stuff can be difficult to see if you don't have a nice front end for it. So we can do that and we can drive it as well. As I say, the ENC, we've got hierarchical parameters, parameter storage, all that kind of thing. And there's, we call it monitoring. I personally don't like monitoring. I like the word reporting um, because we're getting that data back and checking everything in sync. And then you want to deprovision and you want to clean up everything at the end of the host life. So you know, delete DNS records and delete VMs and things like that. So we do the whole lifecycle management. And I guess most of you already know that. So I'm not going to spend very much time on it. But no Foreman talk is complete without this slide, uh, which I'm sure you've all seen before. It's horrendous. Uh, but if you, if you want to know what it means, come by the booth and I'll explain it to you, uh, assuming I'm still awake. So let's, let's talk about what we really want to talk about today, which for me is, is about this idea of puppet diff, catalog diffs. But st I want to start by just laying some, some groundwork for you. How do we test puppet today? I just get people's opinions here. Who, who uses, who writes aspect tests? Yeah, a few people. Who actually runs aspect tests on the modules they download? Uh, <laughs> Who uses a VM to test on? Like try and copy a production machine and actually run the modules there? Yeah, you see, I do that. Um, who does peer review when they change their puppet code? A few people there. So, so there's a different mismatch of ways of doing this. Who actually just commits it and runs it in no op mode? <laughs> yeah, you see, I knew it. <laughs> I do that too. Because actually, whilst this is fine, things like RSpec, oops, no, that's the wrong button. Things like RSpec, ah, my, my hands are actually shaking. So things like RSpec are great if you're the author, and they're great confidence in the quality of the module. And if you're running what we might call a cattle system, where you have 40,000 hosts, and they're all identical, and you never change them, and if you make a change, you just rebuild everything, right? That's ideal. But I don't actually think that many of us are in that position. And I can certainly say that I've got crusty old hosts that have multiple roles, and I worry every single time I make commits that affect those hosts. Anyone else in that situation? Right. So this is the problem, right? We're left with this really awkward situation. If we upgrade all of the modules, if I've downloaded a bunch of modules from the Puppet Forge, and now I want to upgrade those Puppet modules to the latest version, how do I do this? Do I diff them? Do I actually go and look at the code changes from version 3.4 to 4.0? Um, that's a lot of work. Do I trust that these are good changes? Okay. 
yes, to some extent. I mean, I, I'm assuming the authors are doing a pretty good job. But you know, it's a valid R spec test to ensure that it execs RM minus RF slash. So we have we want to do some checks. So what do you do? You end up merging it, and you just run it with maybe no op. But if you've got a lot of hosts, some of them are going to run it before you finish testing it. Or maybe you make, you take one host out of production and you put it in a development environment instead. Slightly better, perhaps. But if I've got variables that depend on the environment. Maybe passwords should be different between production and development. Things are going to change. Again, it's going to be diffs that I don't want to see, things that I don't care about. And I don't want to spend any effort reviewing that. So all of these tools are fantastic if you're the author. And as we get further down the list, they get increasingly worrying and slightly more sketchy. So let me introduce you to the idea of Kaplan. Is this coming and going? Am I losing audio? No, when you no? turn your hand to the right, it gets better. Uh, OK, right, fair enough. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just do No, no. <laughs> so let me introduce you to catalog diffs. I think the key idea here, so, so if, for those of you who maybe don't know, Puppet obviously takes Puppet code, compiles it into a catalog, and then that catalog is sent to the client in order to execute upon. <laughs> So we can actually diff those objects. They're serialized objects. You can take them, and you can look at what's in them. And there are a number of tools out there for to, to do this. But what we're really important to notice is this is not code anymore. right? We've taken out the code. We've compiled the code. We've dealt with all the facts. We've dealt with all the variables, the branching if statements, the optional switches. We've taken all of the hostname specific stuff. We've taken out all the white space, the comments, the puppet tags, the things that don't matter when it gets to the agent. All of that is gone. So that's a lot less to think about. It works if you don't have test coverage, because what you're actually looking at is the actions that the agent would take. So it won't say there's a diff in these lines, because that's what's changed in the .pp files. It will say, you were going to write a file with this content and this mode, and now you're going to write a file with that content and that mode. So even if you don't have test coverage for your module, you still get to see exactly what's going to happen on that host. So this is really valuable, actually. And if you have Puppet code in two environments, and you ca calculate a catalog for each of those two environments, you can run a diff between them. And you can actually see what's going on. Now, as I said on the previous slide, and by the way, I'm going really fast because I'm tired and all the rest of it, so I hope I don't run too quickly. But even if you're the author, these two, the, all the other tools are great. But if you're just a user, then this is really useful. It's even at the very minimum. It's a confirmation of things you think you already know. It's, you can look at the code review. You can look at the, the changes in the module. You can look at the, the change log, right, if, the, if there is one. And you can see what you expect to change. And at the very least, you'll get a confirmation of that. But in extreme circumstances, as I'll show in a minute, you can actually end up with a much more easy to parse diff. And you can have some confidence of what's actually going to happen on your host. So let me introduce you to Octo Catalog Diff. Firstly, this is not my tool. I did not write this. Um, I found this. Uh, GitHub released it in October, I think. And it's not the first attempt at a catalog diff. There's one already on the Puppet Forge that works as a Puppet Face. GitHub have decided to go a different way. Uh, they've done it as a standalone Ruby gem that, you, that has a binary, and you can just run it. And they've done that because their intention is for you to run this from a Git checkout. So you can run this on your local. Um, if you're using Git to store your Puppet modules, you don't even need to be on the Puppet Master, right? OK, you have to supply some data, which classes to compile, you know, ENC data. You need some facts from the host, a cache of facts, in order to you know, generate that input into your Puppet manifest. But ideally, it's staying away from the Puppet Master. You can keep running it while you're working on your Puppet code until you've got it to where you think it's good, and then you can commit it and push it, which is a really, really, really nice tool. Uh, and it means you're not loading your infrastructure in any way. Uh, there's faster turnaround on your code while you're working on it. Let me give you a quick example of what that looks like. Um, so what I have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, here, I have a couple of modules. Um, this is, so I'm using as an example here, uh, the foreman. Is that big enough? Do I need to make that bigger? That's good. It's good? Okay, cool. So the foreman itself, as an organization, publishes a whole set of modules. And I'm using just one module here, the DHCP module. Uh, now, we recently released uh, Formula 114. And that came with a whole new set of uh, the module releases that make up our installer. And DHCP is one of those. So I have in the production environment, I have the 1.13 version of the Foreman 
PHCP. And in the development environment, I have the 1.14 version. So this, I think, I think I used the numbers earlier. This is version 3.4 of the module to 4.0 of the module, I think. Yeah? Sounds about right. So here's what happens if you actually just diff the code itself. OK, there's a whole new license file. That takes a while. Um, new Pixie parameters, new code inside modules, optional blocks, support for Arch Linux, new versions of things, new changes to defaults, change of all sorts of things. Right? It's, it's, it's long. It's really long. I don't want to read that. And, and I don't think many other people do either. That's useful information as you go through the process of developing a module. Again, it's useful for authors. But as a consumer of the module, that is not helpful to me to know whether or not I'm going to have any changes on my DHCP server when I upgrade the module in production. And I can do the same thing for DNS as well, for example, um, because actually it looks almost exactly the same. Blah, 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 blah. I do this for both because I've actually got both in my ENC. So these are really, I hope you'll agree, really complicated diffs. They're hard to review as an end user. They're not going to give me a lot of confidence that my DNS server is not going to break. And if I don't do something like a catalog diff, I have a worry as to what's going to happen next. I'm going to go back to those hacks. I'm going to either move a machine into another environment, or I'm going to use no-op or something like that. It's going to concern me. Maybe I'm going to do my upgrade to my modules one module at a time, which is really painstaking and takes you all day. right? But let's have a look at Octo Catalog. Now, I must warn you, there's a lot of options here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know it's huge. That's because th there's various reasons for that, and I could go through every single option. But the point is, um, there's a lot of different ways you can get data into OctoCatalog diff, and a lot of different sources of things. So, uh, very quickly, what you're seeing is, um, since I need to fill time, right? So that's the the machine we want to compile for. This is where to get the code from. So normally it works from Git, and I'm obviously not working from Git here. I'm actually on my Puppet Master. So, um, so here's a, a checked out version. Uh, and so you see from and to a lot, because obviously we're comparing things. Uh, so we have from production to development, where to get the facts from, uh, where to get the ENC from. So node.rb is very familiar if you're a Foreman user. Don't use here because it makes a mess of this. Where's Puppet so I can actually calculate the catalog and add some color. So it's actually not that difficult to understand. So let me run that, and I hope you'll agree this is a, a simpler diff. Sir? So in order to calculate a catalog, so the question was, where, what do I mean by where to get the facts from? In order to calculate a catalog, uh, what happens normally in a puppet operation is the agent first sends its facts to the puppet master. The puppet master uses that to generate the catalog. So if we're going to generate a catalog offline, we have to get that fact source from somewhere else. Now the facts are cached by the puppet master. So I'm just pointing to that directory basically. So I think you'll agree. Whoop, that's too much. Let's use it. There's the command, and the only diff is one blank line in one concat fragment. That's easier to parse. I have a lot more confidence now. So I'm pretty happy with that tool. And I discovered this tool in October, and I thought, OK, that's pretty cool. What's wrong with it? Why is nobody else using it? Why have I not heard about this earlier? And it turns out there are some caveats. So as we just mentioned, and thank you for the question illustrating it, the facts are not necessarily live. Now, in the case of how I'm executing it, the facts are coming direct from the puppet server, so they are effectively live, as so long as the machine is checking in randomly. But if you've copied that file to your development laptop to run this command offline, that's going to get stale. And that's something you have to be careful with. And it's also something if you're working on custom facts. If you're changing facts as part of the catalog, that's going to affect the compilation of the catalog. So be a little cautious if you do catalog diffs with custom facts. The second thing to note is that catalogs don't specify everything. Agents do get to specify some things themselves. And the main two things to watch out for are dependency cycles. If you cause a dependency cycle or you're changing dependency information, that probably won't show up in the catalog. That information is there, but the agent gets to, to figure it out for itself. And so that won't get caught out. The other one, and this is slightly more insidious, slightly harder to, to realize what's going on, is to do with providers. And I should have probably grouped these last two together. If the provider doesn't support an operation or you have a change to a provider, that's not going to show up in the catalog. Let me give you a couple of examples. Firstly, imagine a file system provider. I could have a diff in my catalog which says, go from, let's say I've, I've created a file system and it's um, XFS and it's 100 gig. That's fine. Puppet can do that. 
but now let's suppose I make a change in my catalog that says I want it 50 gig. Well, Alta Catalog Diff will happily report that as a diff. It's gone from 100 to 50. It's a diff in the catalog. What you won't see is that that's an error because the underlying provider can't do that. You can't shrink an XFS file system. So it will fail. But you won't get that from the catalog diff. Even worse, if you change how a provider works, you won't see that at all. You won't even get a diff, right? So suppose, again, I have a file system provider which in an old version of the provider, it simply checks to see if any file system is present. And if it is, it leaves it alone. But in the new version of the provider, it checks to see if the correct file system is present. Now, there will be no diff in my puppet code, because I have changed nothing. But if I've got XFS in my puppet code, and it's an X3 file system, the new version is going to wipe that out and replace it with XFS. But you won't see that in puppet catalog diffs, because it's not changed in the puppet code. It's changed in the underlying provider. Now, I don't want to warn you off using catalog diffs. I think they're very useful. But I think it is very important to be aware of the differences in the providers. Because to be honest with you, if you don't know that's going to happen, it can really catch you out. So this is all very cool. And oh my goodness, I'm going fast. <laughs> well, much, well, how much time have I spent, Walter? He's gone to sleep. <laughs> how long have I been going already? Because uh, I've got you have 20, 20 minutes? minutes left. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're all going to get to go and get coffee really quickly. Um, OK. So let's expand a little bit. Catalog diffs are lovely, but not everybody wants the command line. And the, co the classic example that has happened to me in jobs past is where you have people just outside the core ops team who maybe want to contribute. Like it's great to make your you know, puppet code, code infrastructure as code means other people can contribute, right? just like with any other type of code. But you don't necessarily give them access to the production branches. And in some cases, you don't even get to see the production branches. So knowing what you're changing can be a little bit awkward. But if someone sends you a, a, a patch, sometimes it's nice for them to be able to go and see what that does. And sometimes you just want to click a button and get a nice UI, right? So the other thing that's worth noting is Foreman has all of this data, right? We already are an ENC for Puppet. So if you're using that, great. So we can provide the class data to Octocatalog diff. We have the facts. That's provided by the Puppet agent. It's stored on the Puppet master, and it's uploaded into the Foreman database. And we have a Puppet master, which usually has a Foreman proxy on it, which has got all the code available. So we don't even need to do Git checkouts. We have the whole lot. So the question that came to me in about, well, just as the deadline for applying for this dev room came up, was can we make this into a plugin? Can we show this in the UI? And is that useful to people? And that's the question I want to put to you guys today, is whether what I'm about to show you is actually useful to you. Because it's really, really hacky. I wrote it in like a week. And if it's good, there's a lot of places we can go with it. But there's no point spending time on it if it isn't. So let me um, show you this. It's, it's a really quick demo. So not that one. Here we go. So it's a very quick demo, um, which is a shame because we're going to be done in like 20 minutes. But I'm sorry. So this is the same thing I just ran on the command line. So you can see. So first of all, for those of you who are not familiar with the, the Foreman UI, I guess I should uh, just go back a little bit. This is what we call the host page. It represents all of the data we have for a host. Um, things like IP addresses. I can go and look at the fax data if I want. Configuration management reports, all that good stuff. I'll just show you the ENC very quickly. So you can see that um, and basically this is what uh, the same data that went into the command line uh, execution that I showed you a few minutes ago. So it's just the DHCP module. And you, it's, it's mandatory to provide at least one interface. So there we go. Um, and the DNS. So no custom parameters, nothing. All fine. So that's what we're going to pass into Puppet Diff. And then here we have this. So what this is doing is it's looking at um, the, it's actually live when you load the page. It goes out to the smart proxy and checks what Puppet environments you've got. Now that could get slow. So maybe we should make that um, use what's on disk on Foreman. But mm. So for now, it's live. And it goes out and it, it gets it. And we can say, give me, well, I, actually, before I show you that, um, you can see that we're currently in the production environment here. So we're going to start. This is our from environment in the command line way of looking at things. And we're going to say, what happens if I move this host to development, which is the equivalent of saying, what happens if I merge development into production? Right? It's the same thing. So now I can come up here and I can say this. Now, this is a really hacky UI. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So it's the same diff, same information. And we can say, OK, that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll do the merge. Useful. Let me show you a slightly 
worse diff. <laughs> so I have another host here. So this has a slightly different uh, YAML file. Uh, in this case, we have a Foreman proxy and a Puppet server. Um, now, that's, those are much bigger modules, but the same, uh, the same diff is what we're going to do. So we're going to go from the modules contained in the 1.13 installer up to the 1.14 installer. And this is, uh, I'm just going to give you fair warning, it's ugly. So this will take a, possibly a little longer to calculate. It's uh, about 1,000 lines, I think. There it goes. So what you can see is we've had a lot of changes in the Concat, uh, how we use Concat underneath, and it just goes on and on. Concat, 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 and it's not very valuable information. But if I keep going long enough, uh, where are we? It will, it will stop being Concat stuff in a minute, I promise. So I'm going to talk about roadmap in a minute. <laughs> Here we go. So actually useful information. You get a little bit better out of this. So you can see ETC Puppet Master has been uh, added and said don't start because obviously we're running that through Passenger. Um, we've changed from a Puppet 3 style uh, execution to a Puppet 4 style. You can see Opt Puppet Lab's been there uh, in our proxy configuration. Uh, there's been some changes in Node.rb, which is our uh, ENC script. Um, and I hacked in an extra change just to prove a point. These all look like content changes, but just to show you how other things look, you can see the mode has changed here as well. Um, that's not actually in the module. I hacked that in as an extra bit. You can see that yeah, it's mostly content stuff here. But, any, but the reason I put this mode thing in here is to show you that actually anything in the metadata of the Puppet uh, code can be shown here. So if you change any of those parameters, um, it should show up in your diff. As long as it's changes to the code and not the providers, as I said earlier. So this goes on forever, and it mostly goes back into being concat nonsense again. Um, changes to passwords and a whole bunch of, um, oh yeah, puppet config. So this is a, uh, a define we've got in our module. So you can see a whole bunch of these have been added. So this is not a massively valuable diff because it's really hard to parse. And that's what you get when you write a UI in two days. But the question is, is this useful? Because if it is, we can do better than this. Uh, at the moment, what we're doing here is we are calling what you saw me do on the command line and parsing the output, which is really bad, really cheap, really nasty, and we can do much better. This has a JSON output mode, and it can be called from a Ruby API as well. So I can embed this in the smart proxy, and I can probably build a UI where you can dismiss parts of the diff as you work through it. You can say, this is not interesting, this is not interesting, this is not interesting. OK, that I'm worried about, that I'm worried about. Yeah. Work through it. And a bit, I guess it's a bit like a GitHub review or something like that. right? And that wouldn't be in a modal either, like this kind of thing. It would go to a separate page. And you know, we, can, we can figure out those details if that's thing, something people are interested in. <laughs> so I guess we have plenty of time. Um, I can hack around on these modules. Do people want to see maybe another example? These are, those are the two examples I prepared. Is there something about this diff style stuff that people would like me to try and show? Tim? Right, exactly. And um, yeah, I don't know if that's possible because of how you calculate a catalog. I guess you could probably parse the output, right? So we've got, we've got things like this here, right? So I guess you could probably group it by that, those entities. That might work. But I can't, do, I can't show that right now because obviously that changes how we parse the output. Um, I don't think there's a switch for that in OctoCatalog. Oh, to, just, to, just to show you this, actually. Um, so if you've not seen OctoCatalog div, this is their example here. Let me uh, full screen that. So you can see, th this is a slightly better example. I might as well show you this since we have time. Um, so that's an exec that's gone away. Some changes of parameters here in this file system. Change of devices, change of file system. So this is the sort of thing to watch out for if your providers change, and so on and so forth. So it's, it, it should cover everything you can put in your Puppet code itself, including things like defines and so on. It's just 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 be really careful with providers. OK, so that's that. So what are the pros and the cons here? Um, this is still load, it's still putting load on the Puppet server. One of the goals of OctoCatalog diff was that you run it locally, and we're not doing that anymore. So no, maybe we don't want to use OctoCatalog diff. Maybe we go to one of the ones that implements it as a Puppet face or something like that. How we call an underlying tool is obviously up for debate. It's better than 
doing it locally on your laptop in the case of fact data because we can continually use that cache data that's coming into the Puppet server all the time. So you should always be up to date. And if we're worried about that, we can always provide fact data to uh, the Okta catalog call from the Foreman database if we want to because we have it there as well. So one uh, potential use case might be to offer uh, an editor or something so you can change the fact data before we send it and things like that. So that's that's potential uh, work for later. It's particularly good if people don't have access to the code itself. And not everybody does, but they can go and look at the UI and do a review and you can say just hey, can you just diff these two environments and see if it looks the same to me uh, to you rather. So that's you know it's it's an edge case but it's useful. And it's just generally good for, for verifying things and for, for quick and dirty kind of what's changed within a UI. So roadmap, I guess the big question I want to hear from people is, is this useful? Is this a tool? Like, I mean, hopefully, if you like catalog diffs, go play with Octo catalog diff. It's fabulous. If you like Foreman and you want to use Foreman and you think these two things should work together, come and tell me. We have a booth in the K building. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your thoughts. And maybe we can have a bit of Q&A as well because we've got a lot of time. So you know, is it useful? Is that something people want? Uh, there's lots we could do. So one of the big caveats right now is the ENC data is the same for our both calls. So for the production environment and the development environment. That is a problem if you change your class parameters. So I can actually show that, actually, since we have plenty, we have plenty of time, right? So uh, etc, puppet, labs, code, uh, environments, development, modules, uh, DHCP, manifests. So if you recall in my ENC, I was specifying a thing called interfaces. If I change that to, I'll just put an extra S on it just to break it. So we no longer have a variable in the class called interfaces, right? If I specify that in my ENC, it will break horribly. Um, and you can show that. Boom. Big crash. And this is the keyword here, interfaces. So it's gone away in the class that we're developing. And now my ENC data no longer works for the development environment, and that means I can't calculate a diff anymore. That is a major limitation of the current version of the plugin. The only way I can think of solving that is some kind of modal. So um, if you think about this page here, we could send that through and use it, but you could also offer it to the user and say what needs changing for the new environment. I can't think of a better way of doing it right now. Um, and there's no functionality in the, in the Foreman UI to have different ENCs for different environments. It's just that is the ENC for the host. So thoughts around that would be welcome, um, but an editor would be a first approximation as to how to solve that. So the ENC itself is not environment aware. The host is environment aware. Foreman is environment aware. You can obviously assign parameters. So I could, I could change this host into the development environment and assign uh, an ENC with the correct uh, variables. But the problem is for this plugin specifically, I need to be in two environments at once, right? Because I need to calculate it two ways. And that, that is a, a limitation of this. Um, now, it's, it's surmountable. We can deal with it. The question is, what's the best way to deal with it? So, um, so the question, by the way, was just whether or not you know, it was the, the form in itself was the environment aware. Do you have a question? Absolutely. I'd like to compare what I've got now in this directory to the plug. If it says it's there, I'm not going to use it. Oh. Or do I have to check it out separately? So I believe the way Octo Catalog Diff it works is you give it two branches and it checks them out into a temp directory and calculates for both. Okay, so if I commit, I have to say compare these two branches. Right, exactly. And that's local to your laptop. So, yeah. yeah. So, so they use it, for example, in their CI, so they can basically run through a whole bunch of tests, including catalog diffs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it. And they do it not by checking out independently. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, it, it, it basically changes to temp and does two checkouts and, and calculates. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So, okay. Um, so, okay, so, so ENC data is right now the, the biggest limitation uh, on the plugin because if you, obviously, changing incoming parameters is a thing that happens quite a lot with new versions of modules. Uh, and that, that can, just cannot be handled at the moment. So that'll be my, probably my first thing to, to sort out. 
Alternate facts I mentioned, if you're working on custom facts or, or you need to, to fake something for a different environment, then you want a, a way to, to provide that data. The new UI is really, I think, important. You saw how completely, completely unreadable that diff gets once it goes more than a page or two. So the ability to, to dismiss it, to have each section in blocks and say, okay, this is okay, this is okay. We absolutely need that. Um, and I'm not a UI expert, but we've got plenty of people on the Foreman team who are. I'm sure we can solve that. And, and then other than that, I want to hear suggestions. Uh, these are the use cases I've thought of, but I'm sure there's more. Uh, if this is interesting you, uh, let me know. You can find the code. Uh, I did say in the, in the abstract that I'll tell you how to install it. Um, right now, I wouldn't, <laughs> is the short answer. It's, um, it's, it's, it's quite hacky, and it needs some extra sudo rules in order that the foreman proxy can run the ENC in order to get the data and things like that. Um, I'm going to make the, the permissions requirements to run it much lighter in the next version, uh, and then it'll be much easier to install and set up, and I'll make sure that's working properly. But if you want to play with the alpha, those are the URLs. Uh, you'll need a, probably a source-based foreman install because it's not packaged yet. Um, and as soon as it's sensible, we'll package it. So I guess that's most of the talk. How much time we got left, Walter? As much as you want. Mm. I thought you were going to say that. I do apologize for going very quickly, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, not feeling super well right now. So I'll finish with a couple of URLs uh, for you. So the, the big blue bit is on all my slide decks. If you don't know Foreman, those are the URLs to work with. Uh, if you do know Foreman, uh, there are three more important ones. Uh, so the community survey is open right now. If you use Foreman, come and tell us your experiences. There are prizes. Um, there's a raffle, specifically. Um, and if you're coming to Config Management Camp, we have a dinner on Tuesday night and a hack day on Wednesday, and you are welcome at both, provided you at least sign up for the dinner so I know how many people are coming. And that's me, I think. Uh, so, yeah, questions? Or sleep, you know, that works too. <laughs> I might have missed that part of the talk. <laughs> you did fall asleep as well. I'm going to give you credit because that's totally what I want to do. Um, the, does it need to run on the Puppet Master at the moment? Is that yes. It specifically, it's being so, so, so specifically, there are two plugins. So you, you install it in the Smart Proxy, and it's the proxy on the Puppet Master that's calling the execution. So yeah, it's part of, it's part so, of that. Uh, so it runs on the Smart Proxy? Yeah. So, so basically, Foreman's responsible for, for telling the proxy what environments to uh, diff and what the host name is, and then the proxy calls back to form and calling the ENC. That's not ideal. I'll probably pass the whole data stack down later, but yeah, uh, it does need to run within the proxy at the moment. There's so the question is if there's a UI for the for, for Octo Catalog diff itself. There is. Oh, okay. What where, where was that mentioned in the website? <laughs> Oh, is it in the camp to camp one? Oh, okay, right. I must have missed it. I just started playing with it, like I say, two months ago. So, and I thought, it, I mean, full credit to GitHub. It's a fabulous tool. So, yeah. but apparently there's a UI for it. So if you're not a Foreman user, you can still get nice UI stuff. Anything else? Is it also possible to test data on like Hira data? I believe so. I haven't tried that myself because I don't use Hira. All my stuff's in Foreman, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, when, um, so I guess uh, very quickly that you can see here I've got a minus minus no Hira config, um, which is a, I've explicitly added that to disable it. So by default, yes, it's going to parse that stuff and bring it in. Sorry, more or less information than... So the question is whether we're getting more or less information than a no-op run uh, on a host. I would say it should be the same information, but you don't have to commit it to that node's environment first, right? That's the key. Um, I, I have an issue with that because if you move a host into a different environment or if you merge the production uh, code, both of those have consequences, right? So you don't have either of those sets of consequences if, if you do it this way. But it should be the same data, yes. Uh, there is a difference if you lose something in your puppet code, for instance, you miss an include for some reason. 
Uh, this will show up in the catalog here, but the solve may not show it because the state won't be checked, but how it doesn't output it necessarily. That's a very good point, actually. Yes, missing includes might not show up, so yeah. And one of the caveats in this is that uh, empty line you added to that file that mm -hmm. can result in a service restart, which you don't see in the div, but it may be something you want to know. Mm, that's true, actually, yes. So is that, is that a limitation on catalog disks in general, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've only used the old one, the face tool. Okay, yeah, sure. There is a definite problem there. Don't see it as restarts. Right. Yeah. So, sorry for for the for the audio. I guess. Yeah. You could you could trigger service restarts that are not going to show up in the diff because they're not explicitly changed in the code. So, yeah, that's fair. But that come that I, I kind of did cover that as a caveat because it, it's I'm picking hairs, but it's covered by the idea that dependency ordering is handled by the client, right? So, so if something changes that has a, a knock-on consequence, the agent gets to deal with that, and it doesn't show up in the catalog, right? So, yeah. Uh, but you're absolutely right. It, it wouldn't cover it. That's true. You could do it that way. Um, I have, as I say, I, I still consider moving a host into a different environment. Even so, so the first problem with that is whether or not your ENC is enforcing the environment, because then it will fail anyway. Um, you'll say, run in this environment, and the ENC, ENC will reply, no, you're in the production environment, you will stay in the production environment. Now, you can disable that, of course, um, but even if you do, you still go back to the problem of saying, well, if I move a host into another environment, what does that do to its variable data? You may be making branching decisions based on the environment. So, um, but you're right, I mean, you could do it that way. Um, but it's still, it's still an old run or another, another environment. So. Mm. They should. I haven't tested. So the question is whether it will include exported resources. Um, I, again, because I, I, I'm a very sort of long-term form user, I've long since ditched exported resources from my set anyway, uh, so I haven't had any to test on. My gut feeling, and maybe you can chime in as well, um, is that they should, if I think there's a Puppet DB terminus in OctoCatalog diff, so you can say go and get data from that. Um, so I'll just, if I've got Wi-Fi, I might be able to show you. Let's have a look. Um, uh, no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> so um, actually, I could do it here, I guess. But we're, we're running a bit low on time. But I'm fairly certain that uh, Octo Catalog. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, you, there's, there's a ton of options for setting up your connection to PuppetDB, which would then presumably also give you a fact data as well. All right. We appear to have exhausted the room, so thank you very much.